Okay, what we're going to be learning today is about quadratic functions. So, this lesson is designed for students who have used Desmos before, maybe once or twice, regarding linear functions. But, they don't really have a lot of comfort with all of the features of Desmos. And, it's kind of like an introductory lesson for quadratic functions. So, students who don't know the difference between vertex form, standard form, and intercept form. Students who can't pick properties out for the graph based on the equation. So we're trying to get them to see those kind of things based on creating some sliders. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to type in y equals. Now we're going to use some letters here. So we're going to do a, <coughs> now I need a parenthesis, and we're going to say x minus h. And we need to square that. Alright, let's have that parenthesis closed. Now to square it, you can use this A squared button or you can use the uh, Shift 6 button on your keyboard if you want to do that. So I'm just going to hit that. And then the last thing we need to do is plus. Okay. Alright, and now in Desmos it's going to show you add slider. So we want a slider for A, H, and K. Those are values that those numbers can change. But we don't want to put a specific number in there. We want to be able to slide them. So over here, we can just slide if we want to see what the A value is going to do to this graph. And if we're not happy with how this is working, we can click on these little uh, scales here and we can change these. So say I want to change it to something like, I want it to go from negative 5 to 5. Let me type that in real quick, negative 5. Five, and say I want to count by ones instead of counting by point ones. Now when I slide this, it's just going to count by ones here. From negative five to five. Okay, I can change it however I want. If I want to play it, I want to see what it looked like animated. I can just do this and it will animate for me. I can change the speed of the animation. I can have it only go one direction if I just wanted to start at the beginning and go to five. So I have a bunch of different ways I can play with that slider. Now, we're also going to look at the H value. Slide that back and forth, and the K value. Now, this is only one of our three equations. So we don't want all of these sliders showing up on our whole screen. There's going to be way too much to look at. So we're going to click the plus sign up here, and we're going to add a folder. Now, we're going to label this folder vertex form sliders. This equation that we're looking at right now is vertex form. So we're going to be looking at vertex form sliders for this folder. And we're going to put all these sliders up into this folder. So you see how this line is drawing down from the folder? That means that these are actually in your folder now. So when I close this arrow, I don't see all of those sliders. I only see the equation. I'm going to actually drag this down. So there's your first equation that you have put in. Now you're going to use that and try to tell me what the A value does, what the H value does, and what the K value does to the graph. Next, we're going to type in Y equals, we need another A, so we're going to do A. Our X squared comes next, so here's where we get that X squared term, plus BX, BX plus C. All right, so our next form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We're going to add sliders. Now, since we're reusing a, it's already in the vertex form slider. So whatever the a value is in vertex form, it's going to be the same in standard form, which is what we're looking at now. So the a value, again, if I go in here and I move this a value, it changes both graphs. But now my b value and my C value are changing just that green curve right there. All right, so now again, we want to practice our skills on Desmos to be able to create a folder to organize our work. So we're going to add a folder, and we're going to call these our standard form sliders. So standard form sliders. We're going to bring these up, drag them into this folder. Close the folder and drag it down below our standard form. 
All right, so now you're going to try to tell me what A, B, and C do for an equation that looks like that. So you're going to say, well, maybe it reflects it across the y-axis, or maybe the C value has something to do with the vertex, which is the point that's in the center of the curve. Or maybe the B value is used to find an intercept of some sort. I don't know. You guys try to tell me what you think these different values do. Now we have one more equation we need to do. Our last equation is y equals. Now for this one, we, it's going to look a little different. We're going to do x minus p minus p. Close our parenthesis. Start another one up. x minus q. Close our parenthesis. Now, this doesn't look like it would have x squared in it because you just see x and x. But if I would multiply those two binomials out, the first term would be x times x, which would leave me x squared. So there actually is an x squared hidden in there. Now, we forgot one thing. We need to put an a value, the same a value we've been using, in front of that entire <coughs> equation on the right-hand side. All right, so now we've got these sliders for p and for q. Again, you're trying to figure out what is this doing to the graph? What is changing when I change the p and the q value? And again, we want to add a folder. So we're going to click add folder at the top left. And this is called intercept form. So we're going to call this intercept form sliders. We're going to slide in our p and our q slider here. And we're going to drag this down to the bottom. I forgot to get my P and my Q both in there. So I just need to attach this Q in here, close my folder. Great. So now you've got a nice organized set of equations. You know the names of each one, so maybe that will help you when you're trying to identify what each one, what the values do to each equation. Vertex form is the blue graph. Standard form is the green graph. That might not be as obvious. And the orange is intercept form, so maybe you can kind of use that. Now, I hope that for my students who are in my Algebra 1 class who are using this for the first time, they'll get to see the subtle nuances of putting a folder to organize your work, or we could even go through the settings and changing the color with the kids so that they can have the colors the way they want them, or you know, just being able to make this their own so that they feel like, wow, at the end of the day, I've made something that actually looks really nice and is presentable and also really helps me find information. So what we would do after this is we probably have a discussion, class discussion. We would say, well, somebody write down one idea you had about the H value. Just one idea. And then somebody say, what one, value, one idea you had about the K value. And then I'd probably get like 10 to 15 different ideas and I'd write them all on the board. And then we go through each one as a class and say, which one do you think is right? Which one do you think is wrong? Why do you think that? Can you prove to it? Can you prove it to me on using the graph on the smart board? And uh, through that kind of discourse that we have in class, I think students will start to see these patterns and these relationships that form throughout these quadratic functions. Thanks.